Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Uh, sorry it's been a while since I uploaded a video. Been back to work doing things. Uh, enjoying my summer so. Uh, hopefully I can get out more videos by the end of the summer. Um, I will be going on vacation in August though. So we'll see what happens around that time. But for now we're going to go ahead and jump into um, how to set up Angular in Visual Studio Code or an Angular TypeScript project in Visual Studio Code. So what you see right here is a base Angular project running um, within VS Code in my browser Firefox. So by the end of this video you'll have this and a little bit more because we may end up doing a little bit of a like counter example where you click a button and the button number increases every time you click to show a little bit of the powers of Angular. So where do we start? So first of all, we're gonna need to download something called Node. Now, if you've never heard of Node, this is Node. The URL is right here. Uh, it'll also be down in the description. All, all URLs and, and instructions and stuff for the terminal will be in the description below. Um, but Node is an asynchronous event-driven JavaScript runtime. Uh, so we need Node to run uh, NPM to install packages for our project, as well as just run the project in general. Um, because Angular uses Node in the background to run the project. So if you're on a Unix-based system like Mac or any other Linux system, then you can download Node.js from your package manager. Um, if you come to this URL, which will be in the description, all these um, instructions for each individual package manager are down here, uh, including Windows at the very, very bottom if you really wanted to install through some sort of package manager on Windows. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. You can just download Node from their site from the downloads page, um, which I will leave in the description as well. Um, outside of Node, what we're gonna need to install after that is Angular. Um, Angular is the framework in which we'll be building our application on. Uh, it uses HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, slash TypeScript, um, and uses uh, things called modules to um, manage the application as well as components and services to handle the views and the way that the web page looks and uh, interacts and such. So once uh, once we get a project running here um, in, a, in a couple minutes, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, show you how to install a package, an NPM package. Uh, we're going to include this moment package here, which is a package that does um, date formatting and manipulation and stuff. So we'll be adding a package, using the package, uh, as well as showing off a little bit of how Angular works. Um, and uh, yeah, so with all those instructions and details out of the way, we can now get to VS Code and create our project. Okay, now that we're in VS Code, what we wanna do is we wanna open up a workspace, somewhere where we can create our project and work in Visual Studio Code. So as you can see down here, let me make this a little bit bigger. For you. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, my terminal is in the directory, my temporary directory, and I have a couple of folders in here. One is called my app, which is just a uh, test Angular project that I had before recording. Uh, and then I have an Angular directory here, um, which has nothing in it. So we're going to go into our Angular directory. Um, and so here's the first thing. So if you have installed Node, JS on a Unix-based system, it should have already added Node to the path. Um, so you should be able to uh, type in uh, npm and have that command available to you. If you downloaded it on Windows, make sure that when you uh, run the installer, you click uh, a checkbox if it offers to add Node to your path, uh, to environment variables. Um, otherwise, you'll just have to add that manually. Um, which isn't super diff uh, difficult. You just look up um, in your start menu environment variables, go to path, click edit, add new, um, and then you just search for the uh, node directory where that's installed and then you should be good to go. All you have to do at that point is just restart your terminal or your VS code, whichever you have open, and you should be good to go. So uh, now if we have npm installed, we want to go ahead and install Angular, and we want to install it globally. So Angular has a package called the Angular CLI, uh, and that allows us to use a command called ng, 
um, and we want to install this globally. So we want to run the command npm install, which will go ahead and install a package for us. We want to add the dash g flag for global uh, and do at angular, so at symbol angular slash cli. And what this will do is this will go ahead and install Angular globally. I've already done this, so I'm not going to run this command. But when you run it, it'll uh, install the Angular CLI globally for you. And uh, that means you should be able to run the ng command in any terminal anywhere on your computer. If you don't add the dash g, it'll just install it for the current directory, for the current project. Um, and it may not even install if you don't have a project available in the directory. So uh, you definitely want to install it with the dash g flag to make sure you can run ng uh, from anywhere. So now that we have Angular installed, we want to go ahead and run uh, the ng command to create a new project. So uh, we're in our Angular uh, directory here in my terminal. So we're going to run ng new and we're going to call this test app. So test dash app. So we'll hit enter and it's going to ask us a couple of questions. So the first question it's going to ask is would we like to add Angular routing? Now Angular routing is something that allows you to change uh, the URL based on some interactions. So like if you wanted a website that had, uh, it was like, you know, localhost 4200, which is the default port, localhost 4200 slash login, and then you want to redirect them to uh, the home page when the user logs in, or you want to redirect them to an error page when the error fails or when the, the login fails, um, you can do that through routing. Um, routing allows you to redirect one URL to another URL, resolve data before a page that's displayed, run a script when a page is activated or deactivated, and lazy load parts of the application. So you can run an Angular app without routing, even if you include routing. So I'm gonna go ahead and include routing here. And then the next question is gonna ask is which style sheet format we would like to use? We have the normal CSS, which is you know cascading uh, style sheet, and we have SCSS, SASS, and less. I usually go with SCSS because it allows for um, nested CSS classes. Uh, I prefer uh, SCSS over any of the others. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click SCSS and it's going to go ahead and create our project. So once this is done, I will meet back with you uh, and we'll go ahead and open the project. Alrighty, it's gone ahead and installed and finished the project, uh, creating it at least, and we can see all the packages were installed successfully, and we successfully initialized a Git repository within that directory. So now what we want to do is we want to actually open uh, that directory. So we want to go to File, Open Folder, go into Angular, and go into our test app project here. We'll go ahead and click OK, and VS Code will open for us. So now you can see there's a bunch of different files and things that we have available to us to look at. I'm going to go ahead and close the welcome screen here. So the important pieces of this project are going to be your source folder, node modules folder, package.json, and package lock.json. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the node modules and the package.json files because these are kind of uh, one and the same. They're, they're tied to each other. So your package.json has a bunch of dependencies or package versions for your project. And this is where you're going to be adding uh, any external packages you want to your project. Um, this is where we're going to go ahead and add our moment package in a little bit. Um, but basically, this just uh, contains the versions of those packages, what, what version to download and install into our node modules folder. As you can see, there are tons and tons and tons of packages in our node modules folder. Um, the package lock.json just locks versions at a certain or locks packages at a certain version. Um, so the package lock.json, if you ever have an issue with upgrading a package or if you ever have a, a, an issue with installing a package, like it won't install correctly, you change the version and your package lock.json exists and then you run a command called npm install and it doesn't work correctly or whatever, just try deleting your package lock, then npm install again and then it should regenerate a new package lock with everything updated to the package.json file. The next thing we're going to look at here is the source folder. So this source folder is our actual project. So we have inside of our source folder, we have a couple of folders. We have our app folder, assets folder, and environments folder. We have our uh, favicon.ico, index.html, main.ts, polyfills.ts, our main style sheet, and test.ts. Um, we can ignore pretty much all the test things uh, for this uh, this video, 
not going to go too much into uh, Angular testing, but the main important pieces here, this index.html, which is like the, the main HTML entry point for the whole, the whole project. Then we have our main style sheet. So this is the overarching uh, CSS style sheet. So this is the top level uh, style sheet here we got here. Um, and our main.ts, this is the top level uh, TypeScript file uh, that we have for our project. Um, so inside of our app folder, we have our actual Angular modules, our actual Angular components. Um, assets is just where you can place, you know, different assets like videos, GIFs, pictures, etc. Um, environments, these are different um, environment settings. Uh, you can look these up on their docs site, the Angular docs site. But for right now, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our app component.ts file. So this is going to be our main TypeScript file. This is going to be the top level top TypeScript file for our Angular modules. Um, the modules folder or file here contains all the modules that we have loaded. Um, so we have uh, a couple of modules. We have a browser module and we have our app routing module. And the reason we, uh, why we have this is because we added routing during creation of this project. Um, that also created this app routing.module.ts file here for when we want to add our different modules routing to different components. And I'll show you what a component is in a few seconds here. So uh, this whole app thing right here is a component. This uh, The combination of the HTML, CSS, TypeScript file, and spec.ts, which is just the testing file, these four files in combination create a single Angular component, um, as you can see with the at component here and the selector app-root. Um, so the way that this works is you have your component and you have Angular, which like takes the code and kind of puts it almost like into the HTML in a sense, um, which will I'll show you in a, in a uh, few minutes. It'll, it'll make a little bit more sense uh, what I mean by that. But we use these selectors to indicate which components we want to add to our HTML uh, at any point. So now we have a project. This is a base project. It's already got some HTML in it. If we open our app.component.html, you'll see a lot of HTML code. We got some CSS code in here as well. Um, but if we scroll all the way down here, we'll see a lot of HTML. And this is basically that, that test page that I showed you in the beginning of the recording. So how do we run this project? So as far as I'm aware, I don't think there's a really good way to run it through Visual Studio Code in a sense uh, because it's being run on the browser. So if anybody has any good way to run the project using F5, using the, the debugger built into VS Code, then I guess you can put it in the description and let me know. Um, but as far as I'm aware, the best way to run these projects is to run it through the terminal. So uh, I went ahead and opened the terminal here. Uh, you can also hit terminal, hit new terminal there. I just hit uh, control tilde on a uh, Windows or Linux machine. On a Mac, it's probably command tilde. We want to go ahead and run this project with the ng command, which is the Angular command, which we installed using the, uh, when we installed the at Angular CLI package. So we want to run ng serve. Now this command is actually going to run something um, from within our package.json. So Inside our package.json, we also have a couple of uh, scripts that we can run. Um, ng, which is the Angular script. ng serve, which is uh, basically just going to run npm start. So npm start um, is the Node.js default way of running um, a project. You can run your project using npm start. I'm just going to run it using Angular, though, since it is an Angular project. Uh, but in the back end, ng serve runs npm start anyways. So. Uh, you can also ng build, ng test, ng lint, and ng e to e. Um, these are all the different types of scripts you can use. They're kind of self-explanatory as to what they do. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit enter on our ng serve, and we will let that go ahead and start up. So I'll be back when it is done. Alrighty, so we compiled successfully here. I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, what it did. So basically, it uh, built a bunch of things, set up a bunch of JavaScript-related stuff. Um, and it should tell you that it is uh, live on your local host at default port 4200. So now if we go back to our uh, browser, so if we go back to Firefox here, 
and I'm going to just refresh because I already had it open. Um, you'll see this page here if you go to uh, localhost 4200 and you just have to type localhost colon 4200 and then it should just you know pop up. So we have all this stuff. This is the, the base Angular showing you um, a little bit about the project. So it'll take you to their Angular site, CLI documentation, and their blog site. They also have some next steps. So you can you know see how to create a new component with this command here, create a new Angular material, uh, PWA support, add a dependency, run and watch tests, and build for production. They also have a couple of other uh, URLs here. Uh, and you can also go to the repository and give it a star if you really want to. But this is the default page with all the default HTML. And, you know, you can feel free to explore a little bit here. Um, you can also go to their Twitter, I guess. Um, explore a little bit here. Look at some of the commands, some of the things you can do. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go back to our code. And uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new component. We're going to get rid of this. Uh, base HTML, we're going to add uh, our own button, and the button is going to be clickable, and it's going to increase a number every time uh, we click the button, and I'll show you how Angular does that by binding values to HTML, um, and then after that, we'll go ahead and add the moment package, we'll print some dates using moment, and that'll be, that'll be the end of the video. So, let's head back to VS Code and add our new component. Okay, now that we're back in VS Code, we're going to create a new component here. So I'm just going to make the terminal a little bit bigger here. Um, and I'm going to split it so we still have our running terminal here, keeping our project running, but we also have another terminal where we can run commands. So make sure we're in the current directory with our projects, which we are, we ls, and we see all of our folders and files and things. So in here, we want to create a new component. We're going to call our component counter. So we're going to run the ng command to generate uh, a new component. And the uh, keyword for generating is uh, generate. Or if you want to shorthand it, you can just type g, so ng g. Uh, and then what we want to generate is a component. So we're going to type component. And then the name of our component is going to be counter. So we're going to hit enter there. And it should go ahead and create our counter component. And you'll notice that we now have a new folder within our app folder called counter. Uh, you'll also notice that this app.modules.ts file has changed. And when we run the generate command, it goes ahead and automatically imports our components into our app.modules.ts file. So that way Angular knows where the um, where our components are. Otherwise, we would have to manually come in here and import uh, our components each time we generated one. So in our counter component here, we have our counter component.ts, counter component.scss, our HTML, and our spec.ts. So we're going to go ahead and remove the HTML from this app component.html. So I'm just going to control A and backspace. So that will go ahead and get rid of all of our HTML. Now, because our project is running, every time we save, Angular will automatically uh, update our UI and our logic and everything, and it'll automatically refresh the web page. So if we go back here, we can now see all of our UI is gone just from saving the project, uh, which is really cool. Um, so we have our kind of component. We have our kind of component.ts, uh, and we have our kind of component.html. So we have a paragraph here that says counter works in our HTML, uh, and we want to add this to our app component.html so that way we can display our entire component. So the way we display our entire component is by uh, using the component selector. So our selector here is called app-counter. So if we go back into our app component.html, if we do app-counter, and then we close that, and it'll automatically close for us. Um, because of an extension I have installed, which reminds me. The extensions for Angular, there are a couple uh, that are a good thing to install. So this Angular language service, which I don't have enabled at the moment, which I'm going to enable. Um, editor services for Angular templates. Uh, this is uh, like the Angular language IntelliSense in a, in a way. Uh, so we want to download that uh, and enable it. So I'm gonna enable this for this workspace. Um, this is by, or it's called angular.ng-template. Um, you can go ahead and look this up on the marketplace and install that. 
Uh, Angular Snippets uh, is another good one by John Papa. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enable that one uh, for version 9, latest update for Angular. You can use Bracket Pair Colorizer if you really want to. I'm not going to use it for right now um, just because I don't really feel like I need to do that. Uh, then there's also the JavaScript ES6 code snippets. I recommend getting this one as well by uh, XABIKOS. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enable this. And that should be all the extensions we're going to need for this directory or for this project. And now we can go back to our code and check it out. So we're going to go ahead and save this now that we've added our um, HTML component here, which points to our counter component. And if we go back to our web page, you'll now see counter works. Cool. So now in our counter component at HTML, we're going to go ahead and remove this template message and we're going to add a button. And this button is going to be called click me. Whoa. There we go. We'll save that and we'll go back to the web page. And now we have a button. Now, what if we want to say uh, that the button has been clicked, you know, X amount of times? We want to add some, some logic to the button. So first of all, we're going to need a counter. We're going to need a variable in our uh, component class here. Now, each component TS file is just a TypeScript class uh, or a JavaScript class. Um, so TypeScript, if you don't know what TypeScript is, um, TypeScript is just JavaScript with a strong type system. Um, so it basically allows you to, if you can notice here, this ng on init function has a specific return type of, re of void. Um, so that means you can't return a string from this function. You can only return a void or no, have no return at all. Um, it also allows you to specify um, the types of parameters and functions. So in this constructor, say I want to have a uh, number and I want it to be of type string. So you can type number, then colon, then space, and then the type. And now if I were to call this constructor, the only way I could call it was if I passed it a string. If I tried to pass it an actual number or an any or anything like that, it would not work. So that's the, the gist of TypeScript. Um, it's kind of like the, the main point of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a counter variable here. It's going to be count. Uh, we're going to make it a number type. And that's going to be that. Um, we're not really going to do anything else with that at the moment. Um, we're going to create a function. Um, and this function is going to be called um, button clicked. And it's going to have no return type and it's going to have no parameters. But what we're going to do is we're going to do count plus plus. So we're going to increase our count variable uh, by one. Oh, and key thing here, we also always have to at this dot. Um, so JavaScript and TypeScript um, require the this dot when we're accessing uh, class member variables. Um, if it's a, like a local variable, like uh, let val or let um, variable equal null or something like that, uh, we can just call variable like so. We don't have to have the this dot uh, attached to it. But because this count is a class variable, we need to have the this dot to declare that this count is coming from this class. Uh, so we have our this count. We're going to increment our count each time we click the button. Now, the cool thing about Angular, it is it allows you to um, kind of interpolate or, or uh, include TypeScript code in uh, Angular in some really cool ways. So what we could do is we can bind this function to our uh, HTML button. I'm going to go ahead and split this so we can see uh, both things here in, in dual split view. Um, and so what we can do is we can add a click event to our button by surrounding it in parentheses. And this surrounding in parentheses makes Angular realize, hey, this is a, a function we're binding to this button that we want to call whenever this button is clicked. And we want to call this event click because we're looking for the click event. And there are tons of other events you can look up in the Angular docs, um, but we're just going to look at the click event for right now. So we're going to say click equals, and then we're going to set uh, open quotes, and we're going to type our function button clicked. And you can see it even has IntelliSense for us there, so I can actually just tab complete it. And there we go. So now we can actually see uh, every time we click this button uh, in our HTML, 
it will call this function. And what we can do is we can actually uh, go ahead and console.log this.count. So we can see in the console that our button is actually increasing the count variable. So we're going to go ahead and inspect element here. We'll go to the debugger and we have our console down here. So this is where it should be uh, printing. So if we click the button, aha, now see this <coughs> is a good thing. So notice I didn't actually set the class variable here. It is set to number, but the default number for TypeScript is just NAN, which stands for not a number. So in order for this to actually increase val uh, the value, we need to actually set it equal to some uh, some value, some, some initial value. So we need to set count equal to zero here. So with count equal to zero now, if we save and we go back, it should now increment each time. So now we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This will keep going for forever. Now, what if we want to put this this count variable here? We don't want to we don't want to print it to the console anymore. We want to show it on the button. Well, we can do that by binding this count variable into our Angular code here. So let's change the title of the button and let's say I have been clicked uh, blank times, right? Now the way we bind a variable in Angular is by using double curly braces. So we can do double curly braces and type count and you can see it automatically brings it up here because of the extensions I have installed. So we can click or auto tab or tab complete count Go ahead and save, go back to our code, and you can now see I have been clicked zero times. That's pulling from this initial value of zero here. So it, it can tell that there's zero clicks. Now, if we click it, you notice it live updates to a one. That's pretty freaking cool. Angular is pretty cool. Uh, so this count variable here, this count value, is actually live updating in the HTML. So we can click this as many times as we want. And we're also still printing to the console there. We can click this as many times as we want, and this will continue to update here. It's nuts. Angular is cool. So that's uh, some pretty, pretty, pretty scratching the surface in terms of what Angular is able to do with uh, data binding. Um, there's also outside of components when in Angular, there's also these things called services which uh, we can, I'll actually, I'll show you uh, what, a, what a service looks like. So we'll go ahead and generate a new service here. So we're gonna run the ng command, ng g to generate, and we're gonna this time generate a service. And we're gonna call this uh, counter service. Um, in which case it's just gonna be counter because it's gonna append the service to it. Um, and you'll notice here now we have a counter.service and a counter.service.spec.ts. Spec is just a test file, we can ignore that. But this counter.service.ts file, this is the one that we uh, want to pay attention to. This is the actual uh, code file that we want to want to use. So services are very similar to um, static classes in a sense in Java. They're very similar, not 100% not exact, but they're they're pretty similar. Um, they're basically just classes that contain functions, helper functions that you can use um, in all of your different components just by importing this one service. So a uh, big use case for services is an HTML REST API helper, which imports or uses some, some REST service um, to get post, put, delete in this, you know, in your service file. So like in your service file, you would have like a function get and you'd have a function um, post, and then you'd have a function put, uh, like so. And each of these functions would have the implementation with the actual, um, you know, HTTP URL that you were posting or to or whatever. Um, so services can be really, really powerful. For this case, we're just gonna basically take the logic of this this button clicked here, uh, this this count plus plus logic. We're just going to move it to the service to show that the service can can work in some cool ways just by importing. So right here, we're going to uh, have our counter variable here equal to zero. And then we're going to have uh, a function called get uh, number. 
and we're going to return of type number and we're just going to return counter and it auto tab completed this dot counter for me um, and then we're going to have another function we're going to call it increment number and it's going to take nothing and we're just going to do counter plus plus and remember to add this dot so now we have our logic here and our get number there go ahead and save this in our counter component here we're going to go ahead and import our component which the easiest way to do this in my opinion is actually going into this constructor here and we're going to actually statically um, pull this in so we're going to do private counter service we're going to give it a type uh, counter service and then if you hit tab it will auto complete and so that you can see the import here is import open curly braces inside of the curly braces counter service from dot dot which is just one directory back slash counter dot service and this allows us to use our counter service now this private here makes it so that we can use counter service anywhere in our code um, in the class we would remove this private here um, we wouldn't actually be able to use counter service here notice it, it doesn't allow us to this is just the actual class itself so this private allows us to use it as like a static variable uh, in a way so we have this private counter service counter service um, and what we want to do is for this button clicked we want to we'll keep the uh, console.log actually we'll replace the console.log because we don't need it right yet um, and we'll go ahead and remove our count variable because we don't need to have that in here either actually no we do need that we're going to keep this because that's what's being bound over here in the html so now that we have our counter service here in our ng on init which this function is a angular specific function uh, for um, the initialization of the web page the order in which initialization occurs is the constructor happens first and then ng on init runs so if you have anything that's constructor specific or if you need something that is done at immediate um, startup uh, you'll put in the constructor anything else in terms of startup logic can go in the ng on init so what we want to do is we can put inside our ng on init here we can say count which you know is this dot count equal to counter service uh, dot get number and we can also go ahead and make this private because we want to conceal our counter variable in here and then in our button clicked we want to do this dot counter service dot increment number so we want to increment our number and then we want to do this dot count equal to this dot counter service dot get number so this will increment our number and then we'll set our count equal to the number that was incremented so this should be the same logic as before just this time it's now being used in a service so that's the gist of components and services and there's obviously more to angular than just that um, that you can look up on the docs but that's the high level overview of uh, components and the such um, now this scss which i haven't touched here um, basically if i just wanted to add like you know class uh, equals um, my button there's something here we can add a class dot my button um, and set uh, color equal to red or something and then save it and then go back to here and you can see that the text is now red so individuals scss files uh, account for the individual components so this counter dot component at scss file only affects what's in the counter component it does not affect anything outside of uh, its own component just like this app component at scss only accounts for the app component module the styles that scss accounts for the entire project though so keep that in mind when you're writing your css code so yeah so i'm going to go ahead and um go get the uh moment package or go to the page and i'll be back with you when i can show you the the npm page okay so here we are we're on the moment page here so this is the actual npm uh repository page for this moment package um the url will be in the description 
but this has all the information about the uh, moment package including the version which in this case is going to be uh, important to us you can come here and do some readme explore a little bit and check out the dependencies versions and all that stuff you can go check out their github repo but for the moment we just want to go ahead and grab this moment package um, so we're going to do this we're going to grab this version here i'm going to copy this version number and we're going to go back to our vs code we're going to go to our package.json here and we're going to go to our dependencies part so if you want to look for on mine it's line 13. yours could be maybe you know give or take one or two lines um, but we want to go ahead and create a new uh, thing here called moment and we have that in quotes put a semicolon at the end of it and as you can see here it's actually auto telling me <laughs> the latest version of the package which I didn't know it did it's just actually really intuitive um, I went ahead and copied the version anyways but uh, it's cool how it was giving me the um, the info here and we're going to go ahead and do moment and then parentheses dot format and then we're going to give it a format string we're going to say uh m m m m d o y y y y and this will format our date uh in a specific way which we'll see in the console because we're going to go ahead and console.log over here and we're going to console.log this moment format so if we go ahead and save everything and go back to our web page, we now have our two buttons. We have our clicky button, which uh, counts the amount of times we've clicked, and this date button. So when we click this date button, as you can see here, we have July 8th, 2020 is the day that I'm recording this. So yeah, there you go. That's how you import packages in an Angular project. So that's that's pretty much it that's the high level overview of angular so um if you have any major questions or concerns or anything like that or i wasn't clear enough whatever let me know in the comments below um if you enjoy the video if you learned something please give it a like and a thumbs up uh or a like slash thumbs up since they're the same thing <laughs> um and subscribe if you enjoyed for more videos uh like i said hopefully i'll be able to make some more videos in the future um still doing the work things and school coming soon but yeah uh thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time